One thing that, that we had in Cuba is the appreciation for the arts and, uh, and the ballet in general, because they, they are very, very familiar. They're very educated audience in terms of, of ballet and, and, and art in general. And, um, and they, they really, um, they are not afraid to show their appreciation, you know? They cheer and they, it was like World Cup or something. It was kind of unbelievable, the reaction. I, I would say that the, the Royal Ballet members were also overwhelmed for that kind of uh, you know, reaction from, from the audience. And now the Christmas dance season continues with a chance to see Carlos Acosta's return to his homeland. There's some strong language as Morfo goes on tour with the Royal Ballet in Cuba. This is William Trevitt. We're here in Havana, Cuba, to witness the Royal Ballet's first ever historical visit to this city. They're bringing nearly 100 dancers, and they're going to be performing just over there at the Grand Teatro, the oldest opera house in Latin America. Oh, no. We were both leading dancers with the Royal Ballet for 12 years, so we know what it's like to go on tour and just how interesting things can get. We never came here to Cuba, of course. No ballet company has on this scale since Castro's revolution of 1959. Which is surprising, knowing how much they love their ballet here, but not when you consider how much it costs. To tour a company the size of the Royal Ballet, with nearly 100 dancers and 50 backstage staff, costs a million pounds a week but the invitation to dance here is priceless. For most of these dancers, this will be their first glimpse of Cuba, but not for one of them. Adopted by British audiences, international ballet superstar Carlos Acosta remains Cuban at heart. <laughs> He's been instrumental in bringing the company here and is certain to get a hero's welcome when his fellow countrymen see him dance. The Royal Ballet are ambitiously bringing with them two programmes involving 13 ballets. These huge productions require elaborate sets and costumes on a scale that the Cuban audiences will never have seen before. It's pretty basic here. The crew have had to bring with them an entire lighting rig and they'll have to work around the clock to maintain their high production standards. All right, it's just next on the right. This is the Cuban National Ballet School. It was founded in 1962 and has an excellent reputation for producing wonderful dancers. The school has offered to allow the Royal Ballet to use their studios for rehearsals and, of course, daily class. Ballet's administrative director, Kevin O'Hare, is keen to see what he can learn about the legendary Cuban teaching methods. He's shown around by two of the school's founders, Madame Ramona de Sa and Fernando Alonso. They're enormously proud of their school and students and seize every opportunity to show them off. <laughs> Very That's very impressive. I used to be able to do that. How come the boys are so good? You don't know. Secret. We can't pinch it. Can't. Come and tell us. We want to know. We want to know. That's hardcore training. Did you see that? Well, I suppose that's it. You're striving for perfection, aren't you? Ridiculous. 
gobsmacked. Who's next? The company have invited stars of the Cuban National Ballet to dance with them in the opening night gala. The Royal Ballet's Tamara Rojo is due to dance with Cuban principal Joel Carreño. But there's a problem. <laughs> Who are you looking for? Tamara. Why? Because uh, the Cuban guy who's dancing with on Wednesday didn't arrive till tomorrow, so she rehearsed with him on the day. Why has he been delayed? I don't know. Well, the people are arriving today, and they're not arriving till tomorrow. Here comes Carlos. Carlos has arrived. Born in Havana, one of 11 children, he hated school and only wanted to play football. In an effort to control his unruly behaviour and on the advice of a fortune teller, his father sent him to ballet lessons, where his talent was discovered. He gained a place right here at the National Ballet School and the rest is history. See you later. While Carlos warms up, Philip delivers the bad news to Tamara. Tomorrow. Well, I don't, think, I don't think you can rehearse tomorrow. I think it's only on the day off. Can I keep my... Time. No, can I keep my decision after that rehearsal? Okay. If it doesn't work, can I say I'm not dancing with you? Then you do with who you Yes. Yeah. I speak to Monica. I mean, I love him and everything, but you can't just arrive on the day. OK. OK, All right, All right. Let's, okay. let's give it a go, but... If it can be, it can be. All right. Thank you. Tamara's reserved the right to pull out of tomorrow night's performance if her one rehearsal doesn't go well enough. So how much rehearsal are they giving you? Half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah. It doesn't seem like much, really. How long would you normally rehearse it for? What a would week. you... A week? A week, an hour early. So five hours, six hours, and they're giving you half an hour. And that's with someone that I dance. With someone you know? Because we don't even know the same version. So what choice do you have? Can you say no? Well, you don't want to do it badly. They've seen the best people in the world constantly for the last 50 years. Will that make you nervous? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to bite the bullet, or however you say it in English. Bite the bullet and get on there. Just go and just, just push. As well as dancing with the absent Joel Carreño, Tamara will also be performing with Carlos. They'll be topping the bill with the Paradeur from Le Corsair at the gala performance. It's a highly technical piece, choreographed especially to show off a dancer's virtuosity. And dance well, it should bring the house down. Billy and I head off to the Grand Teatro.